Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Design Week. I'm going to take the next couple of days and talk all about the design and the aesthetic that has taken a couple of years to assemble and now we're executing and have been executing and now I'm training people about it in it and I thought it would be great to talk about that a little bit so it's not just between me and the designers at Media Day but it's out here as well and I'm actually training Anna right now in this so it's fresh on my mind all the specifics all the minutia um, okay so what is what am I talking about design what does that mean what in particular are we talking about I mean design could be a thousand different things right and I don't mean any of those things at all design is a very specific very concrete concept at media day and what it has to do with is a certain perfect arrangement of parts okay that could not be improved upon and that is perfectly pleasing to the human eye and exhibits a perfect proportion and orientation and organization uh, feeding into certain timeless and immutable concepts and really a divine understanding of, of the world. Um, I believe a divine understanding of the world is the more correct understanding because the simple fact of the matter is there are so many variables out of the, uh, that we, we as scientists, we as human beings and scientists among us find in the universe. Constants, formulae, ratios, proportions out in the way the planets rotate, the way the atoms and the nucleus and the electrons come together. Long story short, I mean, you, you can look at the golden section in leaves and oyster shells, and it's the same ratio. A lot of studies have been done on this. It's not something that needs a lot of extra proof right now from me. Basically, there's a lot of incredible uh, perfection in patterns and mathematics and ratios out in the universe. And that's just one example of the fact that God is the one that built the universe. And so, so on the one hand, we build that into how we understand design. On the other hand, we say, okay, well, what does that mean in particular? How do you do that? What does that look like? And the way we answer that question is we go to designers, not necessarily today in 2017, just designers throughout history of design. And we say, okay, who amongst that history of design have believed and understood design to be this that I just described? Um, and you go to them and you learn from them what design looks like. And you, you, you have them explain to you what design is and how to design things correctly with this whole view in mind. Okay? Long story short, in particular to us, that means that well, let me, let me preface it, first of all, by saying this, right? We're designing websites. And the question that I often ask is, how would Michelangelo design a website? Um, the reason I ask that is because, okay, I believe he was one of those exemplars of that kind of design. And so Michelangelo and Leonardo these are the kinds of men I'm thinking about in design. And, you know, they've, they've done a lot of incredible work 
in all branches of arts and design but they've never designed the website and we would like to do it in that style so the question is how would they do that how to do that uh, there's no simple way to answer that but there's a kind of a shortcut as a, a kind of a proxy to that question and that answer which is what is a website in 2017 other than a bunch of text and a bunch of pictures it's really simple um, now what did someone like Michelangelo perhaps design that was just a bunch of text and a bunch of pictures or what is a bunch of text and pictures in the old sense of of the media and the simple answer is that is books okay books are the answer they're the key to that question so basically we view websites as the books of the modern times or you can still have the books of the olden times around today but you can apply I'll put it this way whatever the design principles were in designing the books of Michelangelo's era are applicable to the, the design of websites in 2017 and so it's kind of a top-heavy analysis a lot of claims and assumptions that I've, I'm making here so I'm not gonna talk all about assumptions and, and in the abstract what I'm gonna do or try to do is film and show some of the books I'm talking about and and say that's what I'm talking about so let's stay tuned all right so what is good design in the old style in the old sense on old books look like let's take a look here's what I've been using as my reference points so here's a book okay here's I mean this is a modern book right but um, <clears throat> this is a book on history of typography and this, these are examples they've got of books they would like to present to the reader and these are the kinds of things we look at like this one right here or this one or this one this now these were published look at the dates 1542 1542 look at this one super famous and then look at that right here so this one is by one of the most important men in the history of design today unknown entirely but nevertheless very important this is Robert Estien a French printer and you know this is the kind of work he did. Beautiful. But this especially is incredible. Uh, take a look at this as well. Yeah, look at these. First of all, on the right, wonderful woodcuts. But on the right, on the left, these incredible letters in, in the form of human shapes. A little bit like the Vitruvian Man of Leonardo da Vinci. So this one is by Jeffrey Torrey. 1529 I mean just think about what that means how old that is okay and um, I actually have something that's very interesting that is the exact same book as this Chum Fleury I ordered a rip reprint of this book look at this so this is a book from 1529 that cost me, you know, 10, 11 dollars. And uh, look at how much design goes into a book like this. Um, but then I went into some of the more specifics of what specific books I like. So I'll show you some more examples. This one is a Geneva Bible from 1564. First of all, look how simple that is. I literally went online, okay, and I looked for how much these would cost because I wanted to have them on hand to teach my designers. I'm teaching Anna all of this right now. And I went online and 
Of course, they cost thousands of dollars. So what do I do? What would you do? What I did was I went online and I took, I found the high quality copies, reproductions and scans of those books, and I simply printed them out in color. And so I've got something in my hands that, that costs thousands of dollars and this cost me $3 to print. Look at these letters. This is also in French. Everything is um, in serifs, classic old style humanist serif font. That you have to go through a lot of length and a lot of effort today. You can't find this font easily. Uh, most people don't even know what, what the difference between fonts is. And the Wikipedia and Google age of today is 100% sans serif, which is to say without any ornament, a font without any ornament. But this is what a font looked like when people still had taste. And the font certainly had ornaments. The font itself, the letters themselves, had beauty. Um, this is how their table of contents looked like, beautifully designed, wonderfully laid out with a great Aldous leaf at the top. first book of Moses called Genesis with the name of God at the top incredible ornament incredible opening paragraph humongous drop capital the font, the font the pilk rose note on the sides beautiful ornate capitals this is what Bibles used to look like hundreds of years ago. Just the most astonishing work of art of that era. Okay, now, let me get to this in a second. Another example from the same time period. Beautiful, similar but designed differently, but also not too differently, so it's quite similar. Okay, also another beautiful Aldous Leaf. Just astonishing designs all around. Okay, that's French. And then later is the golden age of Dutch printing. And look at this, these are called, the, the printers are known as the Elzevirs. It was a family of Elzevirs from the 17th century. And this is what they, produce the kinds of work they made like look at the proportions and the layout you don't even have to understand what makes this title page work but it's just beautiful and elegant and um, in fact almost nobody today understands anymore or knows how this works the mechanics of the formulae and the ratios that make this title page work okay let me go into this now which is an interesting book on the golden section. Um, everything, of course, began with Italians, right? Um, printing was invented in Germany, but typography was invented in Venice. And this is a book from an Italian called Luca Pacchioli on the divine proportion. Again, this is a facsimile, of course. Went online, I was like, how do I get this incredible book? Uh, and it was like seven, eight hundred dollars. So I was like, no, I'm not gonna get that, but I spent 20 and I got this. Look at these letters. Now this face, and in fact, all of these letters, these illustrations for the book of how the golden section pervades the universe and how it's built into the fabric of reality so these, uh, these illustrations for the book were made by Leonardo, personally, by hand. So whereas the, the other books were done by other people, this exact book was illustrated by Leonardo da Vinci. Anyway, so 
these letters are truly incredible. Classic old, old style humanist letters are um, incredible. Anyway, that's 1509. Think of how early that is. Okay. You know, some more interesting stuff. The history of printing. More beautiful letters. Ornate capitals. A specimen of types in the printing house of James Watson. Later on, the English get into the game. And uh, I think this is from 1720s or something like that. Let's see. There we go. The history of the art of printing. Oh, 1713. Yeah, 1713. Um, anyway, so I do have a couple of incredible works from this very time period, ones that cost hundreds of dollars, but through gifts or through old book dealerships over the years, I've been, I've been traveling across the country and the world and going to bookshops, and you can find one of these, like one of these books, but not in the modern reprint, but in the actual original from, you know, 1509 or whatever, for 20 bucks at times. So this was a gift to me from Steve Mariotti, one of my mentors in business. Look at this. This is an original Plutarch, Lives of the Greeks and Romans, one of the most important books in history. Look at the beautiful design of this book. Look at Look at the date, M-D-L-X-X-I-I-I, which translates to 1573. Look at that. This is all in Latin, which thankfully I can read, so all is well. Look at the beautiful ornate capital. Fifteen seventies. This is the book in my hand right now. It's incredible. I almost never open this. I almost never take this out. But for you guys, I might as well for posterity. Um, anyway, this is just incredible. Um, now, I just say incredible, but in fact, we do a lot more than just say it's incredible. We actually look at the specifics and the mechanics, at the italics, how the fonts are arranged, how you have the Roman, the italic, or... Um, let's see if I can find an example. Yeah, see how um, above these, that's, that says Theseus, but above it, you have this kind of weird large capital and small capitals. So that's just called a small capital font. So there's capitals at the top, Plutarchy, and then there's small capitals of Hermano Cruceria. And you have the Roman of Theseus, then you have the Italic of Safikiat, Bugnakes, Ambo. So you have different kinds of fonts that we study, different kinds of designs and arrangements. And we go to the great masters that designed the great buildings. Um, and we also feed back from architecture. Now, what's interesting about this book is, I mean, Palladio was one of the most important architects in history. He wrote this book, The Four Books of Architecture. What's great about this particular book is it's another reprint. You'd think it's a modern book with modern style and everything, but you open it up. First of all, Dover is famous for it, but then you open it up further and you see the proof that this is an actual original edition. The four books of Andrea Palladio's architecture were in after a short treatise of the five orders, those observations that are most necessary to building Private houses, streets, bridges, plazas. I treated off. Look at this. London, now the English are getting to the game. This is now the 1700s, 1738. Queen Virtue. And so beyond the first couple of pages of the modern stuff, this is now 100% old, old style. 
And so this book preserves, what's interesting about that is it preserves the style that the printers would have used. In fact, this just replicates, this just copies everything from that time. So you get that transmission unbroken. And so look at how they would open their paragraphs with small caps. Begin the paragraph with a large drop cap. Begin a section, but then begin, paragra begin paragraphs with small caps, begin sections with small caps, and then capitals, italics. And so we study this as well. This is no worse of a source material for us than any of the other books. Look at the beautiful instruction on architecture. And um, I hope this is going to be a good intro for you guys about the kind of world we swim in because this is the absolute foundation for the Media Day aesthetic. Um, Robert Estienne, Garamond, Caslon, Christopher Plantin, and then of course the Elzevirs are incredibly important and all these other guys are as well. And that is that for the beginning of the design week. <laughs>